Hello everybody, Reggie Time here with the second episode in Understanding Nanostakes and then um, I've decided to make this video on PokerStars. Um, the reason for doing this is I want to try and replicate in some way the kind of grind that a lot of you will be doing, which I presume is going to be playing more than one table on on PokerStars or maybe on a site like PokerStars, maybe Full Tilt or Party Poker or or who knows what. And I'm going to try and talk about some of the problems that you'll face when doing this in your games. Uh, one of the first problems you're going to face um, I'm just going to fold this King Queen here. One of the first problems that you're going to face is having to deal with making more decisions more often um, and kind of have less time to make those decisions. Um, if we follow the method that I prefer to encourage my students to take, at least at first, we've went until they polish their game, uh, which is playing less tables at slightly higher stakes and really focusing hard on quality game selection and um, and just giving yourself enough time to make your decisions, then I think you're going to do a lot better. But lots of people are doing this. They're playing four tables or maybe more, but even playing four tables of Zoom. And then um, you don't have anywhere near as much time to make your decisions. And you will frequently feel a little bit stressed, panicked. I'm not really sure what the word is, but you know, but just under pressure from the, from the grind and from the needing to make quick decisions constantly so what tends to happen then with a lot of players is they go into a into their autopilot mode and usually when you're autopilot in your if you're lucky you're playing your B game quite often you can play in your C game and the problem with most people's B and C games is they're not winning games you're not a winning player when you're playing your B game who knows maybe when you're playing your B game you may be just about break even when you're playing your C game maybe you're a moderately losing player I don't know like Four, four or five blinds, a hundred, something like that. And then um, we need to try to avoid the mistakes that make us lapse into our to our B and C game. So if we are playing that today, what I want to try and do is hopefully get in a few spots at different tables at the same time, and then talk about how it's hard to think about all those decisions because you've just got too much going on, which I think is a big problem for a lot of players. It's not so much that the games on PokerStars are harder, although they are, they're still not unbeatable. I mean, they're still, they've still got some pretty bad players in them and some, some not very good regulars. The problem is you're playing slightly better players on average and you're playing them at a much higher volume and a much faster rate of hands per hour. And all of this just creates a heck of a lot more pressure. And then, um, if your game's not up to snuff, that's why you're going to suffer. Um, got a good shot here, back door, flush draw, back door, flush draw. Um, but I'm just not going to see about this board. Um, I just don't think we have quite enough going on. If we had a good shot to the higher end, I think I would definitely see about, but we don't. And then, I'm just going to check fold. Um, do I want to 3-bet to isolate this guy? Not to isolate, to make him fold at the weaker part of his isolation range. I don't think I do, not when he's 5 x it. The 3-bet becomes too expensive when he's 5 x it. It's, it's not a bad spot to go after a somebody who maybe isolates on the loose side, <clears throat> but when he's doing it and he's, he's isolating to 5x, kind of hamstrings us into having to make some pretty large 3-bets if we want to get out of the line against him. As you can see, I'm not using stats. Um, that's mostly because I have absolutely no reach on any of these players. This might be one of the first times I've ever played 5 and 0 regular tables on PokerStars. So, and for the purposes of a 40 minute video, um, I don't think stats are going to be too important to us. I mean, yeah, they probably have a little bit of value, but I also think learning to play without stats. Um, Learning to play without stats is probably something we should all try and do now and again because I just think it's just going to improve the way you think about poker. It's going to force you to pay more attention. I'm just going to call here with a 9 8 suited. I'm not expecting to get squeezed a huge amount of 5 and L. Um, but who knows, maybe I will. 
I don't think it's going to be the biggest problem we're going to face at 5-0. I don't think it's going to be facing loose squeezes. And facing aggressive squeezes who get out of line. And again, we flop pretty badly. I don't intend to put any more money in the... Well, I certainly don't intend to put any more money in this pot on the flop. I mean, if it checks through and we were to hit two pair or something, then I would, but now I'm just going to fold. Do I want to squeeze here with the ace five suited on table one? This is a question. I think it's my hand's going to be too strong to fold here. I don't particularly want to fold suited ace in these games. Um, but I think I actually want to squeeze it because I don't particularly want to play it out of position either without the initiative. Um, I'm just going to flat the two kings here because um, I think we're going to get a bunch of folds if we just three bet versus under the gun. I think I'd rather flat keep his entire range in and then I'm just going to call and then bet if he doesn't bet at any point. Uh, this board I'm just going to give up. We've flopped pretty badly and now he's checked. I'm just going to start value betting and hope he's Hope he's trying to bluff catch with a hand like Jack X or something. Just going to keep checking here. I've pretty much done with the Ace Five. I just don't think we're going to get to fold too much. I think maybe now I just take a little stab, just to try and get him off. If he has called with like lots of pocket pairs, try and make him fold hands like pocket eights and what have you. Um, he's blocked this river here. I'm not having it. And then, yeah, Jack Queen. Unfortunately, I'm just not having that. I'm going to raise for value. A fold to a three bet because I just I can't. We need more money going on this pot on the river than thirty cents. We can't allow people, and this is a common mistake that tons and tons and tons of micro stakes players will make. There, they will just call. We can't be allowing people to control the action in that way on rivers like by betting thirty cents into whatever it was one seventy or something. Um, if we just call that, I think. We're usually going to be making a mistake. Most often, the guy's just going to fold. Um, very occasionally, he'll be donk three betting with a backdoor flush or something. But most often, he'll just be making a blocking bet with top pair, and they'll free and they will frequently just convince themselves to call. And um, I think if we are just calling there, or even worse, heaven forbid, somehow finding a fold, then we're going to be making a huge mistake because one of the leaks, a lot of like moderate bad regulars, have is there. They try and put block bets out. They're going for a bet fold or a block bet, call it what you will, but they're doing it. They're making it just too small and they're making it pretty obvious like what they have there. So um, we can't allow them to just control the action in that way and, and reduce our chances of getting volume or try and contain the amount of volume that we can get by them putting their silly block bets in. We have to have the courage to, um, to get after those sort of bets. And not just take the easy option and click the call button. It's going to fold the king six. So if you remember the video from last week when we were playing on Poker Stars, if we could just remember back to that and now look at this video, um, there's way less really bad players that we've, we've come across on these tables so far. I don't for one second think any of these players are particularly good. Um, when they're probably going to be somewhat competent. Whereas on, on Sky last week, if you remember, we had guys limping in, uh, calling huge isolation raises. We had lots of guys with 20, 30, maybe 60 big blind stacks, that kind of thing. i just try to show my tens down here, by the way. I should have commented. No value in betting that flop. Um... I just don't think we ever get caught by worse, unless he's got, he's got like the lone king of diamonds, like King Jack with the king of diamonds or something. Um, I'm just going to fold here. I mean, my hand is probably slightly underrepped. It's, you know, I'm kind of just giving the pot to him, but I don't expect him to have a hand like pocket eights there, for example, and just and just stab there. He might do. Who knows? Um, but I think most likely he's just going to have an ace or a queen or... Maybe some random bluff now and again, but I don't want to call the river too, so I'm just going to get out of the hand early. 
and uh, just make it so if we never making a small mistake there I'd rather make a small mistake there than call and then make a bigger mistake by calling the river too sometimes it's just not a good situation for us and it's sometimes best just to get out of it early and um, and cut our losses so yeah as you can see there hasn't been an awful lot of limping in these games it's going to be less less of those types of players to exploit so we have to look at other ways to try and to try and make our money um, I mean my default way of trying to make money is as you well know by now probably if you've watched a lot of my videos is just not to play on PokerStars but if for whatever reason PokerStars is your preferred option because you, know, you like the software or you at, at the, in your country the times you can play PokerStars off a shoe the the best options because other sites don't have traffic. I'm thinking maybe Canada would be a good example of this, <coughs> where sites like 888. Right, let's go back to this point in a minute. I'm going to see bet the, the back door flush straw and the open ender there. I'm going to make a small 4 bet bluff here with the ace 10, obviously folding to a 5 bet. I don't know anything about this guy, but it's blind versus blind, so his range is likely to be a little bit wider than. Some of his other three bet in range, and then um, I think Ace 10 has decent blockers to his five bet shoving range. And who knows, he might just fold if he calls. We've, you know, we've got a reasonably good hand. If he five bets, we have a really easy fold. Um, and now I'm going to C bet, and I'm just never expecting a race to bluff on this board. So I'm going to C bet, and I'm just going to fold to a race. If he calls, I'm probably just going to start check calling just to get value from his flow any floats he may have i think mostly when he calls and i start check calling maybe gonna not mostly but quite often i'm gonna lose probably gonna lose a full you know lose a full stack some of the time but also he might just float there with who knows what and and then just decide to start bluffing with it we just don't know anything about the guy and then um, i think check calling the turn would be certainly be better than betting again I think it keeps his range a little bit wider and then um, we want to try and play against wide ranges as often as possible if we bet again we we narrow his range somewhat even more i mean it's already going to have quite a narrow range if he calls the flop i think if we bet the turn i expect him to call with worse i think it's highly ambitious Yeah, to go back to my point um, about if poker size is the best option, because maybe you do play in Canada and 888 and party poker traffic is really dry if you are in the um, on the west coast of Canada, which I think is the one with the largest time zone gap with most of Western Europe. Um, yeah, maybe poker size is the best option for you then. So in those extreme circumstances... Um, yeah, you might be stuck with just having to play on this site, and if you are, um, I do think there is still some game selection to be had. I mean, I was watching sweating a a friend last night who I haven't spoken to in a while. He's a really good player, but he's a teacher, and um, he doesn't get to play very often. But now he's winding down his teaching year. He's gearing up for, for putting quite a nice grind in the summer, and I was watching him just helping him, just helping him get his game, just just put a little bit of polish back to his game. And then he was playing 25.50, it was about midnight in the GMT, and games were pretty good. Yeah, they were, they were more reggae than I'd like to see, but he still frequently had tables with with fish, so it's possible to um, to get good tables on poker sets, but I'm not saying it isn't possible, um, particularly if you're playing regular tables. I'm just saying it's easier to get good games elsewhere. And um, as a Nando Stakes player, who's probably, if you're watching my videos, um, you're probably not a winning player or if you are a winning player you're not much of a winning player I think usually it's going to be a better option than poker stars for you but this video is being made for the people who genuinely don't have much of a better option and we're going to talk a little bit more about how I think we should be playing in these games and see but here with my upper card and cut shot it's not the best of boss to do it on it's pretty connected um, it's jack high, jack eight. I mean, it hits a lot of the middle cards that he's defending with. But um, and we can barrel a nine. Obviously, with the nuts, we can barrel the queen if he 
check so you could probably borrow the king or an ace too and then if any card under a jack comes um that isn't a nine obviously i would i would just be done with the hand so that was my plan there I'm making this video at 10.30 in the morning GMT, so I'm not expecting these games to be particularly good. Um, I didn't do any game selection, I just jumped on tables with um, with two or three players and just tried to sit to the left of anybody with less than 100 blinds. That's, that's as far as my game selection went for this. Um, I'm playing with a lot of Eastern European players who are probably, maybe, who knows, I don't think there may be too many trying to play for a living as low as 5 and L, but there might be a lot of students who in, in Romania, um, Estonia, Belarus, all those kind of places, who might be actually propping up their, propping up their student life with, with poker. So there could, there could easily be quite a few semi-competent players at this table, at all these tables. They certainly don't feel like they're super soft. They don't feel like they're that tough either. They think they're nitty. They got a nitty, grindy sort of, just quite often just tedious grinds. But um, yeah, there's no one's going to probably be able to put me in too many tough spots. And there's not going to be many fun spots because um, just because people are just playing that little bit better and just making less mistakes. Um, I'm going to take a check line here because he could easily just have a hand like ace jack or ace queen and be a little bit scared of the nine of clubs coming uh, because it's a club and I don't really want to value on myself I can't really bet two streets from here so I'm going to check back call a small bet on the river if he bets up to like 35 cents probably call and not be in love with it and definitely bet if he checks um, and I'm going to bet that 35 cents and I'm trying to get called here by weaker aces um, by maybe some like king queen type hand, that kind of thing. And he just folded, so he probably just had some kind of bluff. This is one of them, I might pet hates about poker says players like factor 232 probably playing about a million tables and everything just stops for him um no offense to anyone out there who is a heavy multi-tabler but you really are some of the most selfish people on the planet on the poker planet you just sit there playing your eight gazillion tables and the, everything just has to hold up and wait for you to cycle through folding the seven two off like 12 times and um it's definitely one of my biggest pet hates on poker stars um just it just it pisses people off it pisses people like me off who you don't care if you piss me off i guess but it pisses people off <coughs> excuse me it pisses people off who just want to come and play poker and uh, like the recreational players they don't want to be constantly waiting for <coughs> excuse me constantly waiting for two or three regs at every table constantly taking 20 seconds every time um i'm gonna start by checking here with my seven i think he can definitely stab with worse on this board um not too pleased that he's potted it but carry the plan out for the time being queen of clubs isn't a particularly good card for me um but again i'm going to check call because i think it makes less sense for him to bomb this turn unless he's got a set or a he's betting a flush draw it makes a lot of sense for him still to like continue with his bluffs on this turn though so i'm going to call again and then make a decision on the river and uh, the three is pretty much a brick so if he bombs it again i might be tempted to call and if he bets more of a value type size, like a half pot to two thirds pot, might fold. But unfortunately, I mean, even to be fair to him, um, I mean, I don't like his his pre flop play too much. But um, he made a really good bet on the turn there. Now, whether he made that really good bet deliberately, or whether he made a really good bet just because he he just clicking buttons, it's hard to say. But I'm going to give him credit for making a really good bet on the turn. I like those kind of bets where people go pretty big for thin value against somebody like myself who's 
It's pretty much captures range to not very good. And by not very good, it means captures range to not having many very good hands. So yeah, we'll give him credit there. And, um, it's not often I give too many players credit, but I will give him credit for making a good turn bet there. I don't think there's anything wrong with the way I played the hand, but I think he he certainly played the hand well. Yep, so just get back to the point of people. At least when we when we four table zoom or at least for, for players that are playing zoom, recreational players playing zoom, they don't have to wait too long for people. But um yeah, in, in regular tables it's to me it's a problem. It's a real problem. Because um the fish are just gonna get fed up and just leave. I mean nobody wants to just sit there waiting forever. Uh, some I mean eighteen year old in his underpants sign some basement in I don't know the Tallinn. Um cycles through eight eight gazillion hands it is just like turbo folding everything, but still when he is turbo folding everything it's still taking him ages to do it because he's got 24 bloody tables to do it through. If you are that guy, um, I'm not going to try and make a change because you've clearly got your own methods, but um, if you are that guy, I don't like you very much. and um, I don't think you're good for poker. I don't think you're at all good for poker. And hopefully, over the years, you'll start to realise that perhaps the methods that you're employing certainly nowhere near the best for you because if you are playing 24 tables and winning you're probably a pretty good poker player so why don't you try instead of playing 24 tables or 16 tables of 5 and L why don't you try just 4 tables in 25 and L instead um, then you can really really focus on bringing your A game to the table all the time because you're never going to be rushed you're always just going to be four tables. Are going to feel like you've got all the time in the world, so you're going to be able to produce your best game way more consistently, and your hourly rate is probably going to be better because I would probably, and, I, and this is just back of a fact packet maths, I would probably rather beat 25 and L four table in four five blinds 100 than I'd like to beat two and L 16 table in for two blinds 100. Oh, sorry, five and L. Um, I don't know, then that might not work out quite right, but you know the point I'm trying to make. Having a higher win rate at higher stakes and across less tables has got to be better long term than than going for a really small win rate, but replicating it across eight bazillion tables has to be better. But again, I'm getting into a little rant about poker stars. Um, and it's because just nothing's happening in the videos again, as you can see. Um, they're really just quite dull. There's no people that limping into pots. People aren't even opening pots that wide very often. It's just a lot of fold, 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 fold. And um, yeah, I mean, this video is called Understanding Nano Stakes. If you're a Nano Stakes player, what you need to understand is that put yourself in good games and crush them. Find weaker players and crush them. That, to me, is what understanding nano stakes is all about. This isn't or shouldn't be an accurate reflection of what nano stakes poker is. It's just a bunch of really, really like hardcore nitty grinders just just playing like pretty, probably pretty solid poker. But let's just have a little look around. Can we identify any fish at any of our tables? Um, it's just full of that. Uh, really 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 nitty just like um just predictable dull grinders this isn't the micro stakes as far as i'm concerned if um maybe it's for some people who knows but for me it just isn't what i might do in a moment is um <clears throat> just pull up my hood stats and just see if there are any fish that we haven't actually identified yet so what I'll do, I'll just pause the video a moment while I get my holding manager up and running. So it doesn't like create a massive blotch right across the screen. And we'll come back with some HUD stats. Uh, so we're back and um, I can't get my HUD running at the moment. The holding manager wants to download and install an update and uh, the hands just weren't important. I just got the waiting for hands message. Um, I don't really have the time now to start um, 
updating holding manager and playing and what have you so unfortunately we'll have to finish the session without stats so i can't really demonstrate just how tight and nitty these games are but um at table let's try and look for the fish at table two here this this um factor guy he's at a few tables but he appears to be doing a lot of fishy things like min three betting and just doing some weird shit so i think he's probably just a bad regular um but I'm looking around my other tables. Um, I have someone there with 80 blinds. Could be bad. Um, no one there under 100 blinds. Nobody there under 100 blinds. Um, and we have, again, we haven't seen too many limpers. Uh, same guy here at two tables. Um, yeah, they're just not, they're just not good games. Um, and something that frequently happens and i mean it really does happen very very frequently anyone in my um my skype coaching group will be testament to this is um people frequently come to me and the the, the story will go something like this i beat five and on stars i lose at ten and on stars um and i think i have massive leaks i need to improve my stock answer first of all is well let's just get you on to Unibet or 888 or you know worst party poke or something like that I'm um, just going to fold here the 89 suited and we'll see you know if you can beat 10 in L because I expect if you're beating 5 in L on poker stars you could probably beat 10 in L on any other site and then <clears throat> they do they instantly just start winning at 10 in L and then we look at the game and they're nowhere near as bad as they um as you think they are I'm just going to call here yeah they, of course they have some leaks um and there's there's quite a lot of corrections we can make but they actually start to win and you can just see a, a change in the demeanor they become more positive um they get more confident when discussing hands and things just change for them just by changing sites <clears throat> and um it's because they're constantly playing these games and it's just hard to squeeze value out when you're having to make your money from mostly beating other regulars Poker is going to be a really, really hard, high variance, very frustrating grind. And what typically will happen, you maybe put four or five good sessions together in a week. And um, I'm going to call here because I want to try and play as many pots with this iron guy as I can because he looks like he's a table fish. If he is a fish, he might not even be a fish. He might just be some guy who just doesn't know to what or reload yet, but still be playing quite tight. But he's a guy I want to be playing the pots with because he looks like he's probably going to be the mark at the table. <clears throat> so that's why we've called here with a hand like 7-9 suited. Unfortunately, we've pretty much bricked out. We just have some couple of backdoor draws. Um, regulars just see about half point into two players irons min race which confirming that he probably is a poor player we're just going to get out and i'm going to continue the point on what happens to most poker stars players now i would imagine this story is going to resonate with you if you were a poker stars player you maybe put four or five days together where you play pretty well you maybe play five six thousand hands and you've won six seven buy-ins and everything's good in the world um <laughs> You sat there and you're pretty much loving your life. You're thinking, yeah, this is good. You know, finally turned a corner. I'm now a winning player at this for the moment, Poker Stars. I'm winning at eight big blinds, 100 over a small sample, and go me. Then, you, on, the, on the sixth day, you'll have that one session where you just lose four or five buy-ins because everything just goes wrong for you and you just lose a lot. And then you've done, done nearly all of your work. All of a sudden, over a week, you've played 7,000 hands and you've only won two buy-ins. And you're back to being your, what is your actually your true win rate of probably around 2.5 blinds per 100. And then your confidence goes down again. You hate poker again. And you're like, fucking hell, this game is so hard. Um, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And then um, it's a cycle that you'll go through time and time and time again. And then... Um, that's just the way it's going to be when you're playing on sites <coughs> excuse me where your win rate just isn't that high you're going to have a really like, you're going to, have to like play really hard and focus really hard for four or five sessions in a row and you're going to focus really hard on your sixth session but you're going to lose three or four stacks through doing not much wrong and then you're maybe going to lose another stack because you're a little bit tilted because of it and maybe not play quite so well and then your next couple of sessions are going to be 
so sort of like just dealing with the aftershock of having a, of a bad session of maybe five or six buy-ins down and you've got to start just rebuilding your confidence all over again and before you know it you played all seven days of that week you played maybe who knows 14,000 hands and if you're lucky you've won three stacks and then um, just rinse and repeat rinse and repeat that's just what's happening to you pretty much constantly um, now put that in against a site where maybe your win rate is nine ten bit who knows more big blinds a hundred which is entirely possible on these softer sites particularly the nano stakes and think about it again in that context when you have your um when you have your little heaters and when you have your, your constant winning sessions you're frequently putting sessions of four or five hundred hands in where you're winning t maybe three or four buy-ins so your upswings are going to be instead of being like a seven or eight buy-in upswing your upswings are frequently going to be 16 20 buy-in upswings and then when the bad session does come because you're not getting as ruthlessly exploited because there's not as many good players to ruthlessly exploit you you're actually just losing far less too and that's kind of the cycle that happens when you play on soft sites not that we're not saying that you always win but you when you are when you are winning you always win a lot more and when you lose you usually lose a lot less because the players the weaker players are less skilled at really 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 pushing home when you're um off your, when you're pushing home against you when you're playing your b game or your c game so our, our wins are always bigger and our losses are always smaller and that's kind of the advantages of playing the nano stakes on smaller sites we reduce the variance because the players just aren't as skilled um at exploiting us or not even exploiting us but aren't, just aren't as skilled as making as making the most of us when we're playing our b and c game our mistakes aren't getting punished anywhere near as much and everyone produces the b and c game from time to time absolutely everybody even the best players in the world will sometimes just have off days it's just it's just human nature um this fan is a factor three bets an absolute ton um I, in fact to the point where i'm even four bet him just for value this is for pure value um it's going to be pretty shitty if you five bets me don't get me wrong because i'm probably gonna to have to fold but he makes these shitty little small three bets just up just constantly he's constantly doing it i've noticed this in him now uh, so I'm just going to try and get some more value. Unfortunately, that's not a good flop for us. Um, so I'm not going to see about this board. I still think we have a fair chance of winning the pot. So um, I'm going to check back. Probably just going to fold the turn if he makes a large bet. Um, you know, the problem is he can, he can have some air size that's beating me. That's my problem here. But he can also have some worse stuff too. I think he's bad enough to three bet and then call with worse hands. Like who knows what, but a queen eight, that type of things. Who knows how bad he is? Um, well, I expect him a lot here to just have ace, queen, ace, ten, um, some pocket pairs. I don't think I'm going to I'm going to get him to fold enough of those to justify trying to bluff at any point. So I'm just going to get my showdown against him and just see what he's doing this kind of thing with so this guy's check call then donks the turn here i'm going to call even though i think it's he's really going to be bluffing uh, pocket tens um I call and i'm probably going to fold the river if he like leads out pretty big again it doesn't make much sense to what bluffs he can have here i think it's just more like he's going to have two pairs quite a lot Queen somehow made him a two pair with like a queen ten or an ace queen or something like that. But if your bet's really small, I'm probably gonna have to pay him off. If your bet's anything much bigger than half pot, I'm probably just gonna fold because I don't think he's gonna have enough bluffs. Um, and he's better size, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pay off. And I'm gonna expect to lose the two pair here a decent amount of the time. Or who knows, maybe even just as a set of fours and plays it weirdly like this. Yeah, ten queen. I mean, it's probably cost himself money there because um, I certainly would have just gone bet bet and used bigger sizes than him. Had he, um, he's going to fold the two fives. Had he checked to me, I certainly would have bet more than he did on the turn. And I, if he checked the river, I certainly would have put a bigger bet out than fifty cents. So he's probably really quite pleased with himself there. Thinks he's, he's outplayed me, but he's actually cost himself money. Because I would have just gone for two more streets there. <laughs> I 
So this video unfortunately has turned more into like a rich time versus poker stars type video than it has a exploit um understanding nano stakes video but we have talked a little bit of and quite quite in depth about how nano stakes poker should be approached in my opinion and um I'm aware that it is just my opinion and it's other people have different opinions and different methods and um I frequently get challenged when I when I speak about poker stars dismissively. Um people are entitled to their opinions I guess really don't agree with them I think most people are doing it wrong um, but they can't be convinced and I'm not going to try and convince people what I'm trying to convince I try to convince the open-minded I'm not trying to convince the the sort of people like the Luddites who the people who are playing in my opinion the people who are playing on poker stars now and who are who are still trying to make a living or you know do something from poker by mass tabling small win rates and just absolutely refusing to accept that there's another better way. Then they got the people who back in the industrial revolution went around smashing bits of machinery up. I mean, the, the kind of Luddites, you don't think they are. They think they're really progressive and forward thinking when actually, in my opinion, they're doing something that four or five years ago was probably okay because the games are probably still fishy enough to to be a crush over them um, big sample sizes. Now the game's just aren't fishy enough. All they're doing is just constantly mass tabling against other similar type regulars, and um, they're not even pushing an edge most of the time. They don't understand that. They want to blame everything else but their actual method of approaching poker, their actual approach to poker. They don't want to accept that approach to poker is fundamentally flawed. Um, so fair play to you if you're one of those guys. Feel free to um you're gonna raise here because I think you can definitely stay in the pot with some worse draws. If you are one of the guys who um who vehemently disagrees with me, by all means tell me your opinion. Don't really want to hear it though. Um not interested. Um because you are probably doing it wrong. If you are playing five or ten and L and you are winning at two big lines a hundred and you think you're doing it right. You're just wrong, but I'm not going to try and convince you. The people I want to convince are the people who want to change. They're, they're doing it now, and they're thinking, this isn't really working for me, but I don't know what to do to change it. And try to show these guys another way. I'm not trying to convert people who don't want to be converted. So, yeah, with that in mind, um, I am going to end the video now because... To be frank, it's boring. Um, we have made the points I want to make. And um, yeah, I've just got better things to do than just grind 5 and L on poker stars against these types of people. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you've definitely got something from it. And if you are one of the players I've just talked about, if you are one of the guys who is doing what we've talked about in this video, playing too many tables, sitting too many bad games and you're fed up with your grind and you do want to discuss taking your poker in a different direction and you'd like some help with that please do get in touch with me i'd be delighted to talk to you um and if you're one of the guys who wants to disagree with me please do disagree with me and we can have yet another round the many go round debate and that you're not going to agree with me and i'm not going to agree with you but hell we can do it anyway because because why not um, but yeah, this is going to be the end of the video when we've played this flush draw out. And when he checkmin raises here, it's just such bullshit, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, maybe he's doing it with a better hand. He probably certainly is doing it with a better hand. It's hard to have a worse hand. But I'm just going to be prepared to get it in here. I mean, when we have good shot straight flush draw, what's not to love? What's not to love about the good shot straight flush draws? I mean, I just can't think of too many true, like, real value hands. I don't think you check min raises with this set, for example. I think it just looks like pure bullshit. So if it looks like a duck, and it quacks, it's usually a duck. So, yeah, with that in mind, we've, we've played that pot out. Um, and let's say, for now, take care, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and um, until the next time, bye-bye for now.